Greetings. For the Mark signing on from St. Louis King of France Parish in Bucktown, Louisiana, on the third day of May 2020. This is the fourth Sunday of the Easter season, uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. Mass intentions are for Rodney O'Neill, Joan Del Pidio, Audrey LaRose, Charles Steyer, Jason Pig, Cheryl Raphael, Charlie Wyndham, Marjorie Woods, Elena Agudelo, Alfred Rene Pierce, Erlene Zoll, Anna May Squartino, Rose Squartino Rodriguez, James Sticker, Paul and Sylvia Versowski, Archbishop Amon, and the 30 million Americans rendered unemployed by the COVID enclosure. We pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died of COVID-19. In the world to date, 244,122. Of that number in the United States, 67,067. Of those in Louisiana, 1,950. At the same time, we offer prayers of thanksgiving for the many more who have recovered in the world to date, 1,100,442. Of those in the United States, 151,502 have recovered. And of those in Louisiana, the State Department of Health website still lists the same number, 17,000. 303 uh, recovered, presumed recovered. I understand that's that they uh, just update the recovered list once a week. We continue to pray for all medical clinicians risking their lives serving the sick, all medical researchers working for a cure and vaccine, all essential workers who risk daily exposure for our benefit, and we pray that this horror movie will soon come to an end. For these intentions, please join me in the Memorare. Remember, O Most Gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to thee now, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, Despise not my petitions, but in your great mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. In local news, something noteworthy has occurred beneath the holy ground of St. Louis King of France Church. By way of background, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, we are told that on the third day of Kairos, God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. Verse 24 of the same chapter records that on the sixth day of Kairos, God said, let the earth bring forth every kind of living creature, tame animals, crawling things, and every kind of wild animal. And so it happened. Moving from Kairos to Kronos, meaning Kairos is high time, is God's time, is outside of time, in other words, whereas Kronos is is the time that we're trapped in. So moving from Kairos to Kronos. Science records that 70 million years ago, one of those crawling things appeared on the earth, species Didelphus virginiana, the only marsupial scavenger in North America. 
The Algonquin speakers among the indigenous tribes named it Wapathemwa, meaning white animal. The English explorer John Smith, the man who mapped Chesapeake Bay, encountered this creature. The name Wapathemwa is not, was not euphonic to the good admiral, so he anglicized it to opossum. In 1608, he described it thusly, quote, An opossum hath a head like a swine, a tail like a rat, and is of the bigness of a cat. Under her belly she hath a bag, wherein she lodgeth, carrieth, and sucketh her young. Isn't that cute? Notice that the hairless tail of the creature led the good Admiral Smith to liken his discovery to a rat. Yet his additional observation of the bag under the belly to carry the young indicates that the creature is not a rodent, but a marsupial. Tightening our focus to the connection of these aforementioned developments with the holy ground of Bucktown. On the first day of the seventh month of the 2017th year of our Lord, a priest was transferred from the parish named for an English king, St. Edward the Confessor, to the parish named for a French king, St. Louis, King of France. Unbeknownst to the priest, in all of his innocence, the ground was already occupied by Jacques, the Wapathemwa. Jacques made his living as a gentleman thief. A quick sprint from underneath Poplar Street brought Jacques to the side of the rectory carport. Agilely scaling the wall, surmounting the roof, traversing its length, confronted Jacques with a chasm between the carport and the castle wall. Undeterred, Jacques leapt the distance, for he was on a quest. Gentleman Jacques was courting the lovely young Juliana, he was determined to impress. That is why he chose a brick building as his target. Annie Didelphid could pilfer a dumpster. Jacques would outshine all the rest by bringing Juliana fresh bread. For long, the bricks defeated him. Up, down, side to side, breathless he climbed until he saw it. A rusted drain pipe had eroded an aperture in the sandstone bricks below. Through the hole, into the building, down the wall, behind a cabinet, Jacques tumbled onto the countertop of a rectory kitchen. Seizing his bread prize, he eluded capture, returned to the night air, jumped atop a vehicle in the carport. Jacques paused to turn and regard the surveillance camera. He lifted his hairless tail in a polite wave, as befitting a gentleman thief. Then he went to find his lady love. His competitors jostled in line, each showing Juliana their offering. Supremely confident, Jacques waited, letting them show her worm-ridden meat, rat-nibbled fruit, stripped avian skeletons. No match for him. The good lady Juliana swooned when Jacques revealed his freshly purloined bread. She was his. They scampered into the moonlight. The next day, Jacques realized the entirely new constellation of problems in his universe. He could not expect the high-born lady Juliana to dwell underneath Poplar Street, as he had done in his rogue days. She wanted a proper dwelling. 
never one to shirk a challenge. Jacques returned to the prow. North on Carrollton he went, through the black iron gate, collecting berries from one tree, then another, then another, until he turned a corner around to the front of church, saw a majestic magnolia soaring to the sky. On the other side, he noticed a ramp leading inside of the church. Nothing to eat there, the terrazzo floor being too hard for even his determined claws to penetrate. But there was something creeping closer, closer, closer. There it was, an opening beneath the ramp. Nothing there but soft Louisiana soil. Soon, Jacques and Juliana settled into their new home. In the bloom of young love, reproduction occurred. Then, it occurred again. Then, it occurred again. Merrily, the newlyweds excavated additional rooms to accommodate their growing family until they met a previously silent neighbor. Gravity. With the soil removed, leaving only open space, the bricked walkway above, leading into church, was pulled down by gravity into their starter home. At that point, we now leave the realm of story and return to the desert of the Rio, where everything cost money. In the coming week, the innocent priest will investigate the cost of repairing the damage. For those of you on the email list, I will attempt to attach pictures from the phone to the email of the entrance to the Possum Den, because no, I did not make up the story. I mean, obviously, I, you know, embroidered to make it humorous because you, you either laugh or you cry, you know. <laughs> uh, but it is true. I mean, the, you can see the the, uh, the opening underneath the the ramp is obvious, and uh, you'll also see the cracks in the walk the brick walkway above as it's uh, collapsed into the into the possum den. As for connecting all of this with the introduction, you know, I started with the Book of Genesis. That seems, you know, maybe that's that's. That's slightly out of scale to to a uh, you know to a possum den, but there is a connection. We now know why the divinity created Didelphus Virginiana on the sixth day of Kairos. It was to torment me. It was to cause problems for me. It was to steal serenity from me. And so, seeking spiritual assistance on this day, when possum-induced subsidence joins COVID quarantine and archdiocesan bankruptcy in the menagerie of misery. Coincidentally, this is the fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. The Office of Readings provides us an excerpt from homily number 14 on the Gospels, composed by Pope St. Gregory the Great, who reigned from 590 to 604. So I'll read the uh, passage, and then we will conclude uh, with a prayer. So Pope Gregory wrote, I am the good shepherd. I know my own. By which I mean, I love them, and my own know me. In plain words, those who love me are willing to follow me. For anyone who does not love the truth has not yet come to know the truth. My dear brethren, you have heard the test we pastors have to undergo. Turn now to consider how these words of our Lord imply a test for yourselves also. Ask yourselves whether you belong to this flock whether you know him, whether the light of his truth shines in your minds. 
I assure you that it is not by faith that you will come to know him, but by love. Not by mere conviction, but by action. John, the evangelist, is my authority for this statement. He tells us that anyone who claims to know God without keeping his commandments is a liar. Consequently, the Lord immediately adds, As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. Clearly, he means that laying down his life for his sheep gives evidence of his knowledge of the Father and the Father's knowledge of Him. In other words, by the love with which He dies for His sheep, He shows how greatly He loves His Father. Again He says, My sheep hear My voice, and I know them. They follow Me, and I give them eternal life. Shortly before this He declared, If anyone enters the sheepfold through Me, he shall be saved. He shall go freely in and out and shall find good pasture. He will enter into the life of faith. From faith he will go out to, vis to vision, from belief to contemplation, and will graze in the good pastures of everlasting life. So our Lord's sheep will finally reach their grazing ground, where all who follow him in simplicity of heart will feed on the green pastures of eternity. These pastures are the spiritual joys of heaven. There, the elect look upon the face of God with unclouded vision and feast at the banquet of life forevermore. Beloved brothers, let us set out for these pastures where we shall keep joyful festival with so many of our fellow citizens. May the thought of their happiness urge us on. Let us stir up our hearts, rekindle our faith, and long eagerly for what heaven has in store for us. To love thus is to be already on our way. No matter what obstacles we encounter, we must not allow them to turn us aside from the joy of that heavenly feast. Anyone who is determined to reach his destination is not deterred by the roughness of the road that leads to it. Nor must we allow the charm of success to seduce us. Or we shall be like a foolish traveler who is so distracted by the pleasant meadows through which he is passing that he forgets where he is going. Let us pray. God, our Father, give us new strength from the courage of Christ, our shepherd, and lead us to join the saints in heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. If you are able to assist us financially at this time, you can do so by clicking the I Give Catholic link below this video, or if you prefer, use the, uh, the postal service. The mail-in address is also below this video. For those of you who are not able to assist financially, uh, uh, please do continue to help us spiritually through your prayers. And many thanks to those of you who have uh, been, been contributing, uh, especially during this COVID quarantine. St. Gregory the Great, pray for us. St. Francis of Assisi, animal lover, we need your advice, pray for us. Our Lady of Prom Sucker, hasten to help us. In conclusion, stay cautious, stay calm, stay safe. Thank you for your attention. This session is adjourned. <laughs>